All right, this is our second video today. I think we're on notes number 28 today. And in the first video, we solved exponential and logarithmic equations, and we're continuing to do that, but these last four examples are more complicated problems. So we're still going to use the same idea, which is you use exponents to solve logarithms and logarithms to solve exponents since they are inverses. And we're going to be solving for the exact answer as well as the approximate answer. So taking a look at number seven, you'll notice that we actually have two different bases in the equation. We have base two on the left and base seven on the right. So when you're choosing what kind of logarithm to use to simplify this equation, you can choose to either use log base two or use log base seven, or you could even use a different base like 10 or E, but most likely you're going to choose two or seven. And it doesn't really matter which, so I'm going to, ju to just choose log base two. So we have, log base two of two to the x minus 10 equals log base two of seven to the three x minus one. So what happens on the left is you can bring down the x minus 10 and then log base two of two is just one. And what happens on the right is you can bring down the three x minus one and put it in parentheses, but log base two of seven doesn't simplify, so it's still there. Okay. Now remember our goal is to solve for x, and we have x on the left and we have x on the right. So the next steps that we're going to go through help us to get all the x terms on one side of the equation. So I'm going to distribute log base two of seven. I'm going to multiply it by three x and multiply it by negative one to get rid of the fractions. So now we have x minus 10 equals three x log base two of seven minus one times log base two of seven. Okay, so no more parentheses now. So now the next step is to get all the x terms on one side. We have two x terms. We have x and we have three x log base two of seven. So those are going to one side of the equal sign and the other terms are going to the other side. So I'm leaving x on the left and subtracting three x log base two of seven. And then I'm going to add 10 to both sides. So now 10 is on the right. So we have 10 minus log base two of seven. Okay, the next step in the process is one that a lot of students forget about, and that is once you have all of your x terms on the same side, you factor out x. So when you factor x out of both terms, you're left with one for the first term and minus three log base two of seven for the other term. So once you get that step, the rest is simple. All you have to do is divide to get x by itself. The answer doesn't look simple, but dividing by something is simple. <clears throat> so we have x equals 10 minus log base two of seven over one minus three log base two of seven. So that's a complicated looking answer, but that is the exact answer. It would look different if I chose from the very beginning to use log base seven instead of log base two. The answer would be equivalent, but it would look different. Now for the approximate answer, I'm going to put that into my calculator. And I'm going to walk you through how I would put that into my calculator because it is a little bit complicated. So the first thing you have to do is make sure that you have parentheses around your entire numerator and parentheses around your entire denominator for the order of operations to work. And additionally, if your calculator opens parentheses before the seven inside the logarithm, you need to close those before you move on. Same thing on the bottom. Okay, now I'm going to grab my calculator and show you. Okay, there is a possibility that I've already shown you this, but it doesn't hurt to repeat it, so how do you do a logarithm on your calculator? If you have a calculator that was made in the last four or five years, you should be able to do a log with any base you want. And the place you find that is you go to math, and then you're gonna have to go down a ways until you find log base. You might get there faster by going up instead of down. So log base, and then you can type in your base, whatever it's going to be, like three, and then you can type in your argument, like eight, something like that. There's actually a shortcut for finding log base, so instead of going into the math menu, you can go to alpha, window, that, take, that takes you to your F2 menu, and your F2 menu is a shortcut menu for a lot of things you might use often, and you'll notice number five is log base. 
So you select that, and then you can do the same thing. Okay, so for the problem we're doing, the numerator is 10 minus log base 2 of 7. So parentheses, 10 minus, and now for my shortcut, alpha window, number 5 is log base. Then I can put the 2 in there and the 7, and then close the parentheses for the numerator. Divided by, open parentheses for the denominator, 1 minus 3 times, and now alpha window for log base shortcut, and then this one's also base 2 of 7. So look at it, make sure it all looks right, close those parentheses, and we get approximately negative 0.969. So I'm going to write that down. So that's my approximate answer. And we'll move on to the next problem. Number 8 is similar. There's nothing new about it. I just want to give you a chance to practice this because it is more complicated. So I would recommend you pause the video, practice it, do what we did on number 7, and then check and see if you did it right. So you can choose to use log base 3 or log base 4. I'm just going to use log base 3. So log base 3 of the left and log base 3 of the right. On the left, bring down the x plus 2, and log base 3 of 3 is just 1, so you don't have to write that. And on the right, bring down 2x plus 5, be sure to put it in parentheses, and that's multiplied by log base 3 of 4. Now you want to distribute to get rid of the parentheses. So we have x plus 2 equals 2x times log base 3 of 4 plus 5 times log base 3 of 4. Now you want to get all of your x terms on one side. So x minus 2x log base 3 of 4 equals, now you want to get the other terms on the other so, side. So 5 log base 3 of 4 minus 2. Just be careful about this because you don't want to do 4 minus 2. You see the 4 is inside the logarithm and the 2, the minus 2 is not. Okay, once you have your x terms on one side, factor x out of both terms. So we have x times the quantity 1 minus 2 log base 3 of 4. And then write the other side. And then all we have to do is divide. So we get x equals 5 log base 3 of 4 minus 2 over 1 minus 2 log base 3 of 4. And that's the exact answer. It will look different if you chose to use log base 4 instead. Then you're going to type that into the calculator and get the approximate answer. And for that, I got x is approximately negative 2.828. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. So the next two problems are going to be slightly more complicated logarithmic equations. And so this logarithmic equation has two logarithms in it. But you know from previous lessons that there's a way to combine logarithms into one. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use log properties to combine these into a single logarithm. And because we have a log plus a log, we're going to use the product property to combine those into the log of a product. So we're going to have log base 5 of the product x times x plus 2 equals 6. You can go ahead and simplify that product any time. So we have log base 5 of x squared plus 2x equals 6. So now this looks like one of the easier logarithm um, equations that we were doing earlier. So we can exponentiate. 5 to the left side equals 5 to the right side. And that leaves us with x squared plus 2x equals 5 to the 6th power. 5 to the 6th power is 15,625. Ooh, that's not a fun number. And then let's go ahead, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm just getting tired, but I'm thinking, wouldn't it be much more fun if that number was actually not 6? What if that number was just 2? Wouldn't that be a much more fun problem? Are you okay with me just changing it? Do you wish you could do that sometimes? Like, just rewrite the problem to numbers you like better. Why not? Teacher does it. So 5 squared is 25. Okay, so still it's going to be a little bit complicated because chances are it's not going to be factorable. So we're going to, oops, that should be an x. We're going to have to solve this with either um, the quadratic formula or completing the square. Suppose I use the quadratic formula. 
So we have x equals the opposite of b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So we get negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 104 over 2. And that can be simplified to negative 1 plus or minus 2 square root 26 over 2. So we have negative 1 plus or minus square root 26. Now here's the thing. In logarithms, the argument has to be positive, which means here this x has to be positive and this x plus 2 has to be positive. So let's find the approximate values of these numbers. Negative 1 plus square root 26 is approximately 4.1. 4.099 and negative 1 minus square root 26 is approximately negative 6.099. Well we don't want the negative one because if you substitute it in for x you end up with a negative argument in your logarithm. So we're only going to keep the positive one. So our exact answer is negative 1 plus square root 26 and our approximate answer is 4.099. Okay, so this last example is very similar. We have multiple logarithms in the equation. We have a log minus a log, so we're going to use the quotient property to combine those. So it's going to combine into log base 2 of the quotient x squared over x plus 5, and that equals 4. So now we can exponentiate 2 to the left side, equals 2 to the right side and that gives us x squared over x plus 5 equals 16. 2 to the fourth power is 16. So from here what we should do is multiply both sides of the equation by x plus 5 to get rid of the fraction. So we have x squared equals 16 times the quantity x plus 5. We can distribute the 16 and then we can get everything over to one side and I don't know if this is going to be factorable. Um, actually, I think it's looking promising if we try x minus 20 times x plus 4. So that's kind of cool. I like it when that happens. Set each of those equal to 0. And solve each one. We get x equals 20. We get x equals negative 4. So don't forget we have to check to see if any of these answers are extraneous. Don't automatically eliminate a negative answer. Um, just take that negative answer, plug it in the arguments in the logarithms, and see if you get a negative argument. So if we take 20, 20 squared is positive, 20 plus 5 is positive, so that's fine. And if we take negative 4, negative 4 squared is positive, and negative 4 plus 5 is positive, so that's fine. So both of these answers work. Okay. Here is your assignment, and it has a mixture from the easiest problems from the beginning of the lesson up to the more difficult problems at the end. And I want you to give exact and approximate answers like you, you saw me do. And when I do the homework, I'm going to approximate to the nearest thousandth, round to the nearest thousandth. That's three numbers after the decimal. And what I've done is I've made a solution uh, key for you because I don't think the book gives you exact answers, just approximate, but I want you to be able to look at the exact ones. So be sure to look at the solutions I have provided. Thanks, everybody.